if you're anything like me, you're an addict. And me, well, I'm addicted to mangas. And in this video, I've compiled what I deem to be the most incoherent pile of mangas, and their only relation is that they are all mangas. Actually, that's not even true. Some of these can be considered manwas and webcomics, but whatever, they're still really interesting. I'm not going to talk about super well-known stuff in this video, so I've picked 10 mangas that I deem are incredibly obscure, but are interesting enough to make people read them. Actually, that's not even true. Some of these are pretty much hot garbage, but are still entertaining nonetheless. And this video is going to feature all kinds of genres from E for Everyone to M17+. Plus. And if you've read all these 10 for 10 before, I don't believe you, but I left a timestamp in the comments with age ratings and trigger warnings, as well as genres, so you can skip around the video for your own viewing pleasure. And without further ado, uh, enjoy. Homunculus is a story of a 34-year-old man living out of his car. One day, a transgender Japanese Dennis Rodman approaches him and asks if he can drill a hole into his head in exchange for some money. The homeless guy isn't really interested in the money, but asks why he wants to drill a hole into his head, and transgender Japanese Dennis Rodman replies, It's supposed to unlock your sixth sense. And then the homeless guy's like, okay, and then gets drilled in the head. And after that, he just starts tripping on ball sack, like it's actually insane. There's this one time he sees a hooker with her ass mutilated, but then her ass starts shaking on its own, like she's a hoe. It gets really weird from here, and the rest of the story is just pretty much him helping people in very strange ways. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's really cool. The one thing that was interesting to me about this manga was the homeless main character. He wasn't always homeless. Actually, he was really rich at one point and owned a nice flat and a nice car in the peak of the city, a yuppie, some might say. But even with the quote-unquote perfect life under late-stage capitalism, there was something off about it, and he slowly started to lose his mind. I don't want to get too deep into it because uh, it's kind of spoiling the manga, but he's pretty much a living embodiment of rejecting society and returning to monkey. There's some really interesting class critique dwindled into this manga, especially with the whole idea of the white collar man. In Japan's office work culture, the issue of overwork and exhaustion is actually one of the worst in all of the OECD countries. There's this terminology called karoshi, which means to die from overwork, and the office workers are pretty much getting milked for every ounce of their energy. And since Japanese culture has always been to be polite and to do what is expected, employees feel that there is a stigma for saying no. It's pretty much one of the worst cases of corporate slavery in the first world, where people are not living, but simply existing. And even though the main character chose to go homeless rather than live this fake ass lifestyle, it seems that throughout this manga he's still confused and lost about his place in the world. Yeah, he got the bitches, the money, and the status, but so what? And even when he decided to go homeless, he still felt like there was something missing from his life. And so this is a story of him discovering himself by drilling a hole into his head and nutting on everything he sees. The girl from class is a story of a virgin. A virgin with no girlfriend. A virgin with no life experience. A virgin that has never experienced the sudden brutality of teenage heartbreak. It's a story of an unnamed college student who sits beside a girl in class and realizes, damn, I want her. That's it. That's pretty much the entire story. No crazy plot twist. No insanity. Just 28 chapters of a college kid wanting to ask the missus on a date. And frankly, it's 28 chapters of sheer brilliant storytelling damped and sodded under the panties of such a simplistic and effective prompt. You feel everything you need to in the story. Love, pain, anger, sorrow, happiness, but you don't even know the names of these characters. This romance slice of life story may be off-putting to some of you because there is very minimal dialogue and the characters don't even have eyes. But I promise you, if you get over that one inch barrier and try to experience the story for what it is, you will quickly be suffocated by its raw beauty. By no means is this an out of the world fantasia, a masterclass epic of a story, but to me a simple excerpt from somebody else's life. A memory of someone you might say. Maybe that's why the art is so minimal and lacks more detail than it needs, because the author is retelling a hazy memory from long ago. Blue Box is a story of a high school student that's in the badminton team. Every morning he trains alongside his upper class woman and crush who's on the girls basketball team and it's really sweet and shit, okay? One day when the girls family decides to leave Japan to work abroad, the girl ends up living with the boy. So obviously being the shonen protagonist he is, he decides he's gonna win the NBA championship equivalent of the Japanese high school amateur athletics association award and then eventually ask her out. This manga came out very recently and even though it's small in scale, every time I read a chapter my heart thumps a bit louder. You know, I don't like to admit that I'm a simp or soft when it comes to love mangas, but for some reason this one is just really sweet and makes me tangy all inside. Usually when it comes to romance mangas, I've never really enjoyed them, especially when they're clearly baited with sexual innuendos and lewd artwork, because it feels to me that the women in the story usually become less and less human with every titty I see. But I find this one quite special in how it tells its story without having much sexual implication. Or maybe it's because of the fact that I was like the main character once too. 
I remember this one time in elementary school when I vowed to myself that I would make the basketball team and then ask my crush out. Sadly, I didn't make the team. My hands couldn't even dribble the ball because I had a growth deficiency. And that girl, well, she's kind of weird, so I don't really miss her. One time during lunch, she started cutting her spaghetti with scissors, like safety scissors. And after that, I lost all attraction. Cool manga, though. Dogningen is a story about Rex, a half-dog, half-man who was born as a result of a mysterious man fucking a female street dog who gave birth to him and died doing so. For being half-dog, half-man, he got bullied by the neighborhood kids, so Rex decided to get revenge on his father by penetrating him without consent. This manga is pure meta-satire on point. It combines edgy internet humor as well as great storytelling and great artwork into one package in what seems to be a brilliant seinen manga. And I'm being deadly serious when I say this. Yes, this manga is super edgy, but it's understandable because the original version of the manga was created by a 16-year-old in high school and then redrawn by an 18-year-old kid from Serbia. I've been writing some mangas myself, and seeing these young fellas communicate their vision to the public and gaining a fan base without a publisher makes my eyes water, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I would never stick my dick in the stereo when I say this, but I'm screaming fuck the system. In this day and age with the availability of the internet, you can be as creative as possible and show your work to literally everyone. You don't need a cosign from a musty middle-ager that doesn't understand your vision. You can literally do your own thing and release it on the internet. Because at the end of the day, what is real will prosper. Not the corporate slavery that adds minority representation for bounty points from critics. But some real shit that might get overlooked at first. You know, the things that actually speak to the people. And maybe you could create that. Or me. Or somebody in this world. Okay, shut up. You're talking too much. Let's go right now! I ain't letting nobody stop me from killing my father! Suicide Island is the story of a man that killed himself, but failed. He's saved by a hospital, but is then asked the question of if he wants to kill himself, actually, with medically assisted suicide. Being rid of the reason to live, he asks to be killed, and then dies. Okay, no, he doesn't actually die. He gets transported into an island with other suicide survivors that also wanted to kill themselves called Suicide Island. An island free of rules and regulations where people can do whatever they want. Most people kill themselves at first. Some people commit disgusting deeds before killing themselves as well. But the remaining people of the island settle into their own factions and then the factions start beefing. And that's pretty much the story, but there's some really interesting theme in this one as well. Usually with stories like this, it would end with, uh, like, the friendship is magic, whatever, BS. But this one doesn't really do that. The main character lives alone, isolated, with his dog in the middle of the woods, and tries to better himself by living alone, and trying to find meaning within himself. Yeah, there's still some of that power of friendship stuff, but there's still a lot of ideas about self-discovery through isolation, which I found really interesting. So yeah, you should check this manga out, it's pretty cool. Cohabitation is the story of a 21-year-old jerk-off that never gets laid. One day, he's given a Hail Mary from heaven when his old schoolmate, a big bully that liked him, asks him if he can stay over at his apartment with his girlfriend for a little while. And who would've guessed, the girlfriend is a peng. A few days after arriving, the big bully leaves the house but doesn't respond to the calls of his girlfriend or the jerk-off. And who would've guessed, the jerk-off starts making moves on the girlfriend and the story goes on from there. Frankly, this isn't a love story. It's a hentai or the Korean equivalent of it. It's a story of lust but a realistic form of lust that I really, really like. The problem I have with a lot of mangas and manwas in general is the strict baiting when it comes to its portrayal of female characters. Giving them big titties or big ass and those unrealistic and weird orgasms. I hate, I hate every single thing about those. But even though this story has nudity in it, it seems much more grounded and realistic in its portrayals, which makes the interactions between the characters much more realistic and pleasant to keep up with. It's a story I come back to not just to jerk off, but to enjoy once again. I think this manga focuses a lot more on primal instinct and thinking with your dick rather than real emotional connection, which leads to some pretty crazy plot elements in the future. I must warn you though, you may hate the main character by the end of the manhwa, but just know that most hetero men are like this. Not me though. Not me. Not me. Uh, my DMs are open. Drifting Neck Cafe is a story about a salary man with an ungrateful bitch of a wife as he works hard to put the food on the table and live a rather simple life. His bitch wife always complains to him about him smelling like cigarettes like he isn't slaving away at his day job as is. During a work trip, he decides to spend time in an internet cafe where he meets an ex-schoolmate girl who he hasn't seen since middle school. The girl and the boy liked each other during middle school, but during a blackout, she licked his nose, which caused him to lose all attraction for her. 
Yeah, I know, it's, it's kind of weird. Back at the cafe, several clients began to have problems with their computers and the cell signal disappears. When they try to leave, they realize that they're not even in Japan anymore. They're in the middle of nowhere. Some real crazy shit starts happening to the cafe goers right after this. People start killing each other, some girl gets a train ran on her, while the cell man thinks about cheating on his bitch wife with his peng schoolmate. To me, the most interesting theme that this manga tackles is what humans would do without any restriction posted up on by society, how quickly they would become animalistic and ravage. But the biggest reason I recommend this is because this manga is really weird and strange, even though the premise seems a bit generic at first. Ratman is the story of a man that is a high school teacher by day, but is a perverted brand of justice named Ratman by night. Now for obvious censorship reasons, I will refer to him as Ratman and Ratman only. Pretty much it's an episodic manga series where a client calls Ratman to handle a case where women are acting up and he is tasked with penetrating them without consent, I guess as a lesson. You know, I try to be as open-minded as possible when it comes to the introduction of new ideas, but this manga is using sexual assault as a good thing, a lesson. Here's one story from the manga. An actress is playing the role of a woman that gets assaulted by her boss. But she can't get the role right, so the director gets pissed off. And during the lunch break, Ratman gets called to the scene and assaults her. And then right after that, she gives the greatest performance of her entire acting career. This manga is supposed to be a black comedy, but like, come on man. I don't know, I feel like if you give this to the wrong hands, something very dangerous might happen. And there's also some parts of the story where I just can't believe this is supposed to be ironic or comedic. For example, earlier in the story that I mentioned, the director is trying to convince the actress that doing the sexual assault scene is okay. He says, oh, come on, it's just sex. You don't even need to think about it too much. Throughout history, women have been repeatedly treated as such. In other words, it's a woman's destiny. No, it's a woman's happiness to be treated like this. You can call it the very basis of every female and male relationship. And when I read that, I'm like, either this is extremely meta ironic or the author is an incel, but I feel like only an incel could write this. And I'm not trying to psychoanalyze the author off his manga, but I genuinely feel like this guy is projecting all of his hate towards women and labeling it as black comedy because that's the only way this is acceptable, you know what I mean? Now, I'm not trying to endorse this manga when I post this on this channel. The reason I'm showing it is to show a new perspective, which I always like to do. And I know some of you will get offended as I am for women in this manga, but if you're curious about reading it, I highly urge you to check it out and think to yourself, what the fuck were these guys on when they made this manga? And can I get a hit? Oremonogatari is a story of Takeo, a goliath of a high school student who doesn't get any hoes. The reason he doesn't get any hoes isn't because he's fat or ugly, it's because he is too tall and too muscular that he scares the hoes away. His best friend is charming and good looking and completely different from him, but due to childhood circumstances, they're best friends. One day a girl is harassed in the train by a pervert and Takeo saves her, which inevitably leads her to falling in love with him. The reason I like this story a lot as a man is not because of my shortcomings in my love life and the inevitable feeling that I'll end up alone, but because of the sheer sweetness when I read this manga. Takeo and his new girlfriend, they talk about such mundane and in retrospect, such pointless things like, how was school today? What did you eat today? Did you finish your homework? And when I was reading it, it made me realize that all the big and crazy talk about the virus, the vaccine, the endless wars, and the politics is all crazy and stuff. But sometimes talking to that painting at school about homework or the way that one girl smelled when you was in dance class together with her uh, was, was kind of nice. It seems that the curse of our generation is being scared and irritated by the future and our impatience with finding out what we really want to do with our lives, as well as all the politics and the social gimmick that make us get lost in the present, make us ignore the stressful days that will come after it as much as we can. So I read this manga as an escape. No, not an escape, but a reality check that I'm a pussy. Bro, I could have gotten this video out like a week ago, but I procrastinated so much. Like literally yesterday, I played 12 hours straight of Valorant. 12 hours, that's like half the day. Jesus Christ. Oh, no! Also, this part of the video, I just wanted to show off my ace oh my that I got on Val. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyways, you know, I'm single, so I can't experience this myself. But if you have a Galdem or a Boydum and are just chilling one day, ask her or them or he, how was the day? What's happening? What's good? And really listen to what they have to say. Because all this mundane sweet talk that seems irrelevant or boring, that's what you're going to remember at the end of the day. Not the sorrows or the pain. Yo, I got the ace, but like, I didn't even realize that we lost. Like, we, 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 I, we lost the round. Survival is the story of a teenager who survives a catastrophic tsunami that sinks almost all of Japan into the bottom of the ocean. It was made in 1976 and you can tell because the art style looks hella dated and it looks like World War II propaganda but trust me this is actually really cool. I remember reading this in February 2011 when I used to live in Japan and just a month later a tsunami hit pretty close to where I was. Of course I was fine and moved on but others were not so lucky. It was one of the worst earthquakes in recent times and in the end 20,000 people died because of it. 
I picked this manga up on the 10 year anniversary of the tsunami which happened in March of this year and I enjoyed it a lot. The main character gets completely isolated with no one to rely on. His goal is to find his family who may or may not be alive and the struggle he takes to survive is kind of grim at times, to the point that it may have just been better to die. But he continues to move forward even with all the bullshit that he has to deal with and his goal of seeing his family being incredibly uncertain. Natural disasters are pretty common in Japan, uh, the 2011 one was a huge one, and to me this manga is just a representation of that natural disaster culture. You know, I've seen a lot of apocalypse media coming out of Japan, mainly around the themes of the effects of war, but not many about actual natural disasters. As humans, we're kind of egotistical as a species. Yeah, we're at the top of the food chain and nobody can eat us without getting bodied, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're at the top. It will always be mother nature that chokes us until we come. Nature is what we build our world off of. It is where we look for food and shelter and resources. And frankly, it is quite beautiful in its composition. But then again, it can peg us hard and we frankly can't do a lot to save ourselves from it. Nature is the entity that holds us in their care in this world. It lets us breathe, it lets us drink, it lets us eat. So it's very silly to think that we're the best and the brightest that this world has to offer when we take so much away and give back so little. Maybe one day a real rain will come and wash all the scum off the streets and we'll realize how pathetic and helpless we are and maybe we'll whimper and cry for taking it for granted and for thinking that we're at the top of the world. Look at me trying to be deep. Just go read the manga, okay? I'm probably just gonna go drink out of a plastic straw or something.